we have Federica Carlino. Am I saying that correct? Yes. Ah, beautiful. And I'm very glad about it. <laughs> <laughs> the rise of the villains. That was that was interesting. You guys actually um, had everything done in one set, practically. What, what, am I correct? Yeah, it was. Okay. It was. In the film, oh, this, um you had, you practically redid uh, the, the Christopher Nolan scene with the Joker and yeah. Two Face. Exactly. And it was intriguing because, you know, I've never, you know, never heard those lines in Italian before. And, really? <laughs> yeah. Sai, io non voglio che ci siano dei ancori tra di noi, Harvey. It was int uh, interesting to actually see like little montages of every villain, you know, kind of like being introduced visually per scene. Yeah. When you guys actually made this film, it almost felt like it was supposed to be almost like a silent film, almost, because it was yeah. just so visually appealing. Like, uh, tell us the process. Like, what was the idea? Mm -hmm. So, well, I always wanted to do something to, as a memoir for um, Heath Ledger, because I really cared about him. Like, it was really sad when it happened. Actually, he died a day before my birthday, so oh that, my was, that was so sad for me. Um, and I always wanted to do something with the Joker. And we decided to recreate the scene, but with a different outcome, because that's actually just the first episode. Now we're working on the fourth. Oh. Um, so there's there's other two more, uh, and that's just the introduction. So, but the other two are just uh, we just wrote them out of scratch, because uh, that's just the the beginning when Joker kind of goes and gathers all the criminals from this real asylum. Uh, it's an abandoned place. Oh, uh, it, uh, yeah, it was um, part of the Napoleon um, land, and um, during World Wars um, yeah. was overpopulated with patients and oh my it's goodness. been a long time now now it's been abandoned okay so the perfect location actually oh okay yeah well, very resourceful of you <laughs> thanks um it, it kind of threw me off with uh gordon actually having an argument with his partner in the car the lady took off the ring i couldn't tell if that was supposed to be like his partner in crime his wife it felt like a hundred emotions just kind of like was thrown at you on your lap, you know, like it was yeah. kind of seeing like Jack Sparrow be, you know, slapped twice. And you just <laughs> like hit, it just hit you like, oh, like a hundred like storylines just actually appeared in my head and you didn't even have to say it. Um, exactly. What was that storyline? <laughs> yeah. So uh, we actually focus on that on the second chapter. Uh, so she's actually about to marry someone else. But they have an affair. They are co-workers. So he's trying not to let her into the place because it's dangerous. But she's kind of like, you don't have any power on me. Because just because we have something, I can do whatever I want. And um, with the, the style of uh, the montage, I guess, with the characters coming out in almost slow motion. Yeah. I, I wanted to actually ask, like, what was mm -hmm. your artistic direction in trying to get people to... I guess, understand what the asylum meant. It almost felt like the asylum became their palace, but also the asylum was, you know, like their 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 home that they're trying to just, you know, grow up from. I, I, I need to understand, like, what, yeah, yeah. what did you want them to actually? Oh, that's actually the, the representation of the title. So it's the rise of the villains. They are rising from this place that was captivating them and it's a moment of freedom because they are beginning to be themselves again after a while we don't know how long they've been there so i felt like that moment was an empowerment from them they finally can escape from all these uh tortures from this mm, mad scientist how how was the production for it i mean i get it it, it was in a in a, in a band of, uh asylum like did yeah. you guys have to pay rent or was that just actually no it's a zero budget project we oh, just really? uh, yeah we we shot a music video uh with julia that is actually here and uh and angelica she's also here and we fell in love with the location so we decided to come back and since we had this idea for a while we decided okay i think this is the right place to do it actually back in the days like because it's been 
some years now. Back in the days, we didn't have many people visiting the place. So we knew that just going there wouldn't bother anyone. Uh, and actually police officers were going around and picking up and asking us, oh, what are you doing? And they were very interested in it because it's not really like LA that wherever you turn around the corner, someone is shooting something. So seeing someone that is actually shooting a short, it's something magical. Uh, especially in our area, we, we live in the north, so it's not really like living in Rome where everyone is uh, doing something cinema-wise. So it's, it was pretty cool. That's lovely. lovely. <laughs> I know that the Joker was the Christopher Nolan Joker. Yeah. What were the other styles that you actually had? Mm -hmm. Like, did, were they were they taken from any other like uh, sources for Ivy look? Harley was from a uh, um, video game called Arkham Knight that um, Julie actually really likes. So she loved the look. She looked like she showed me the picture and I fell in love with it. So we went with that. Well, of course, yeah, Joker was from that, and um, uh, all of them were like the basic look that everyone knows because we wanted people to immediately recognize them mm. and then um later in the series we kind of change the styles with our own preferences because at this point everybody knows who's who so we can uh, we can change the look now i think it's just uh the very basic looks like for example the, the riddler is the very common one that everyone knows from okay. any any version i have a question for our joker here I have to translate because he asked me to translate for him. Oh, okay. When you did your style of Joker, were you trying to be Heath Ledger or how did you actually come up with your 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 version of Joker? Like I know that you looked like Heath Ledger's Joker, but you know, I don't think it was completely Heath Ledger that you were out there. Uh, entrambi. <laughs> Both of, it. Both of it. And he's also a cosplayer and he, he, all, all of his costumes are made by him from scratch. Beautiful. And so, yeah, he's, he's really talented and uh, he's also a great performer and I liked him for that. And he, he kind of, he added both. Yeah, he, I, can, I can see both Heath Ledger and his own uh, acting style. I hate to admit it, but I kind of felt like uh, I felt a little, you know, good fellas. Um, okay, for our Harlequin, was that your outfit also? Are you a cosplayer? No, I am an actress, but I had a <laughs> yes. lot of stuff and I put together all those clothes and I create the look. <laughs> okay, lovely, lovely. I actually had two pair of tights one black and one red Ooh. up my legs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and let's say that also the location was really chill, even if it was around, I think, I don't remember, probably May, right. but it's pretty humid. So she was, she was freezing a lot. Ooh. Yeah. How do you deal with that? How do you do it? When doing the, the film, I was like, uh, did anyone have to get into I guess, uh, a character moment, because I know that it was a lot of montages left and right. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. did you guys just have to strut? Um, no, I mean, we just, uh, we had it on the, we had it on the script. So we, it was actually good for them because they were warming up. And uh, I just let them do, it was kind of improvised because they said, just do whatever you think your character would do at this point. And uh, they gave me what I wanted. They acted pretty good. It was, uh, it was felt, really felt. Yes, yes, <laughs> I felt too. <laughs> um, all right, I would like to then oh, this, uh, proceed with just your vision. You know, you said that there's, uh, there are a few more episodes. Yes. Like, where is this going? What should we expect? So for the first two chapters, we didn't show Batman at all. Because uh, we, of course, we wanted to focus more on the on the dark side of this, but we also, we also wanted to justify what the villains are doing and why they're doing it. And we also see more the GCPD, so the the Gotham Police Department. So for the second one, we added Penguin, and um, for the third one, we actually have the same ones, but there are 
different plot twists because we also see for the first time Batman here. And the fourth one, um, we, are, we are gonna add more villains. For example, Zatanna is one of those. Okay. okay. Yeah, and she's actually here too. Oh, hello. <laughs> Angelica. Hi. I am so sorry that all the female characters in Batman do not wear pants. They do in our show. <laughs> exactly. They do here. Good, good. They do. Oh my goodness. Okay, I would like to ask the actors, like what was their favorite part of the production? Oh, I'm curious about that too. <laughs> Me and Federica also made some costumes. <laughs> Like the the Riddler jacket, we painted it, <laughs> or we uh, we we made the scarecrow mask. Oh, okay. By ourselves, so <laughs> it was very fun to do that. <laughs> oh, it was amazing. Yeah. Yes, the the best part for me was screaming during the the scene. <laughs> Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah he's you, both you, um, he's both the Scarecrow and Gordon. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I see it now. <laughs> the location helped us with the screens and the crazy stuff. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah. It was very, I don't know, it was, I, I had chills in some of those rooms. <laughs> it's very, it's a, it's a cool place with the, uh, yeah abandoned creepy beds and like there were um uh, teeth some teeth in a in, in a room wait what yeah, that's kind of... yeah. yeah you can see it. oh my goodness yeah. yeah there was a lot of medical stuff uh on mm -hmm. all over the place uh, and somebody took something uh, that, that's the 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 real strange part not that you find it that someone take it that's the problem. <laughs> oh my God. It's it was very yeah. creepy. Yeah. They still own the files of the patients with the data and everything because it's just there. Oh. Would you like to add anything else uh, before we end the process of the Q&A? We started production for the fourth chapter uh, a year ago and oh. COVID uh, stopped us, but I managed to fly to Italy to finish. So now we are planning a couple more. Okay. And yeah, I mean, we, we're loving it, actually, because we didn't think, like, it was just supposed to be one chapter, but after all mm, people enjoying it and asking us for more, we decided to go on with that, so. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, it's such a, it's such a nice experience every time. Okay, okay. I mean, how, how are you guys actually getting around COVID and filming now that you brought it up? Well, it, for me, it's, um, it's very difficult because I used to live in Burbank, so I would have just a couple breaks uh, during college. Um, but now I don't even know when we're going to be able to meet again because it's, it's been a while now. I, you know, I hope you guys actually do well. If anything, you know, just like break a leg anywhere, you, anytime you can. <laughs> it is really hard to actually make a film out there right now. If, you know, whatever, like, COVID is an issue. Definitely mm -hmm. COVID is an issue. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much to the entire cast. And oh. <laughs> Federica, um, it was lovely speaking with you. Same here. Thank you so much. <laughs>